Hey guys, how's it going? I uh, thought of a new video series idea. Hope you like it, and I want this to be a little collaborative as well, too, so make sure you're commenting below. Big idea is let's go over warrior poets of the past uh, so that by looking at different examples throughout history, and, and I don't want to be a chronological snob, even more present day guys, uh, can be used as well, but uh, by looking at folks in the past, we would learn from their example uh, that would be inspired by and encouraged by not just to become better protectors, yeah, that's the big idea too, uh, but also to be just better men and women, right? So, uh, you know, comment below and say, hey, you got to cover William Wallace, or hey, Robert E. Lee, you better cover him, or uh, whatever else. Uh, tonight, wanted to do this, and by the way, I want to keep these kind of short and sweet so that you can kind of get encouraged through your week, and hopefully I'll be able to do one of these a week or every two weeks. Depends on how much you like them. So here's our pilot, our first one, uh, and if you don't like it, it may be our last one, but I want to talk about a dude named David. Uh, he was an Israeli king about 3,000 years ago. Our uh, oldest historical manuscripts on this guy, we got a lot of historical manuscripts on him, uh, but the oldest ones date back about 22, 2300 years ago, so uh old, old manuscript. So in terms of historical viability, we're, we're sure of the life of David and the general ideas surrounding him. So uh, anyway, uh, he was kind of a rags to riches story. Uh, he, you know, just kind of a shepherd. Uh, but one day a foreign army besieged his nation. And when nobody else would kind of stand up to these people, because really it was going to be a decimation, an annihilation. There's one strong dude, kind of like their champion, who's punking them out day after day. And when little David, he's just kind of a boy at this time. So I want to put this in context, too, and kind of sweep it up to our more modern day sense. So it's not just some something that happened long ago. And so it's not it loses its thrust, I suppose. But this little kid, essentially, hears of this guy punking out his army, and he's like, wait, wait, what's happening? Who is this guy? And in David's terms, he's like, that he should dare defy the armies of the living God. And that's his, that was his way of uh, being uh, patriotic. So uh, he, he, anyway, he, he just kind of picks his weapon, which was a pretty inferior weapon, and just to kind of give a, a more modern-day context, imagine kind of like, uh, you know, a... a a kitted out operator who's just got, you know, his plates, his uh, helmet on, he's got his tricked out M4, and he's been trained and battle tested and all this, and he's out there ready to do work, and some kid comes out just wearing his Haji man dress, uh, no armor at all, and he's got a little 22 revolver, snub nose. <laughs> and this kid not only meets him on the battlefield, but the, 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 the manuscripts we have says he, he runs out to meet him and then ends up, uh, you know, uh, taking just a rock, you know, knocking the dude unconscious, takes the guy's sword and saws it off. Uh, and that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Sorry, but any, anyway, yay, uh, David. So that was kind of the start of his, uh, his fame to him because everyone just, nobody had heard of anything like that. That's why you're hearing of it today because, hey, somebody a long time ago did something crazy uh, and pulled it off. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Uh, he, he ends up becoming a king and not just a, not just kind of like a warrior mighty king, but he was a good leader too. Uh, even in exile when people were trying to kill him, he's out like living in the wilderness and an army just kind of finds him and people are like, uh, in, meaning like, hey, you're David. We've been looking everywhere for you. Can we join you? We're like, I don't know what I'm doing. It's like, hey, we want to join anyway. <laughs> and before you know, he's got this massive army around him and, and whatnot. Uh, special operations unit uh, uh, basically materialized around him too. They were called the 30. And these were bad news dudes. And then there were, among the 30, there were three dudes. Uh, and these would kind of be like tier one, some of the baddest men that have ever walked the planet would uh, come around him, but it shows something of his character was inspirational. He wasn't just a good fighter. He was definitely a fighter. The king before him, people would say, hey, Saul has killed his thousands, but David, David's killed tens of thousands. Uh, so uh, anyway, this guy is bad news. I keep saying bad news a lot. I don't say bad news that often in real life, but I just kind of got hooked on it right now. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, anyway, a, a great kind of warrior king. And the reason I, I single him out isn't just because he was a great fighter. There's lots of great fighters in history. I'm not talking about Attil the Hun tonight. I'm talking about this guy because there was something more to him. So uh, we have some of his uh, 
Uh, I use the term warrior poet in a metaphorical sense. Many of you are warrior poets. I'm an aspiring warrior poet. But him, not in a metaphorical way, David was actually literally a warrior poet. So, uh, you know, he would go bathe in the blood of his enemies, and then he'd write songs to God in poetic verse. And, and here, here's a few of them, and you don't have to be a Bible-believing Christian or anything. You can be a dogmatic atheist, and he's still, it's a cool example to live by. So don't crush me, trolls. Be nice. Trolls, be nice. You're not going to be nice. <laughs> All right, here you guys. It says, uh, blessed be the Lord, my rock who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. He is my steadfast love and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield, he in whom I take refuge, who subdues peoples under me. O oh Lord, what is man that you regard him? What is son of man that you think of? A man is like a breath. His days are like passing shadow. Uh, in that last verse, uh, in this Psalm 144, uh, it's talking kind of like, uh, it shows a glimpse of his humility, his recognition of his mortality. And the first line is, blessed be the Lord my who trains my hands for war and fingers for battle. I'm like, yeah, that was the source of his strength, right? Uh, that that's that's what fueled his training, uh, protector of people, and then and then uh, verse two, he's my steadfast love and fortress. Uh, you know, I've I've heard uh, here's a, if some of you just barely made it through it because it, it had the word Bible attached to it, you just barely made it up. You're like hyperventilating. You're breathing in a paper bag. Good job suffering through, guys. Uh, they'll, they'll be non-Christian Hebraic sources will go through with warrior poets too. So submit your own and I'll uh, I'll cover some of those. But they got to have the kind of the warrior poet thing. Now, uh, I've heard folks who are like, you know, I'm not a lover, I'm a fighter. Or, or, or I'm a fighter, not a... You know, and I always hated that false dichotomy. It shouldn't be mutually exclusive options. Really, if uh, I see David and I'm like, I see lover and fighter. And all of us should have that as well. We should be lions and we should be lambs, right? Uh, in, in the sense of, if you're a great lover, then that means if you love someone, love protects, love defends. And so to be a great lover, but not also aspire to be a good protector of that object of your affection means that you're not really the great lover that you could be. A great lover should also seek to protect. But a, a great protector who doesn't also love, it's like sawing the branch you sh you're sitting off of. If you're not a great lover, but you are a great protector, eventually you'll lose the thing that you were fighting for and you'll be adrift and cease to be a good protector. So the things are uh, um, absolutely connected. Uh, so that, and that's really the push for us. Uh, let's make sure we are great men and women of character, with good leadership, with good values, that, that, that uh, oh, we're fighting for something bigger than ourselves. We're not just fighting for the vain glory of being an opera. You know, something like that. Uh, you know, that, that's, all, that's all just so hollow. So anyway, warrior poets, uh, train hard, train smart. See you guys.